What's up, YouTubers? It's me, Johnny. Today I'm going to make a video about cryptocurrencies and my thoughts on the crypto, like on the metaverse, cryptocurrencies, what I think is happening, and just a few of the macro views I have on the market and what I think is going on, things like that. Anyways, I'll start off by saying, let's look. The markets today are selling off. The s and down about three quarters of a percent. The Dow's down about a quarter of a percent. As of right now, the Nasdaq's down about 1.2 percent. The Russell almost one percent. But here's what's more interesting: oil is down one and a half percent. Gold is down one percent. Silver's down two and a half percent. The euro is down against the dollar about a quarter of a percent. Interest rates are going up a little bit. And the ten years up a little bit. No, wait, the 10 years down. Well, let me look at the chart. Yeah, interest rates are down from the highs. We got up to 147.20. The low was 142.10. We're at 143. Damn, that's kind of volatile. Anyways, getting back to the markets, gold's down like almost 1%. Silver's down, oh wow, it's only 1.5%. Silver earlier was down, I think, 2.5%. Or I might be wrong. I may have read that wrong earlier. But anyways, the euro's down against the dollar. The pound's up a little bit against the dollar. The dollar's up against the yen. According to this, Bitcoin's up almost one percent let's see where is Bitcoin at Bitcoin's at 47,155 East at 3,800 Solana's at 157 Cardano's at 124 um, where's Terra at? Terra Luna is up 5% at 59.20. Just a short comment on Terra Luna and why I don't think in general the cryptos are in a bear market right now. Now, this is a contrary view. Most people think we're in a bear market now. My opinion is I don't think we are. We'll have to wait and see, but right now I would say we're in a neutral trend to downtrend in crypto. But I think just as I personally think this is just a correction in a longer term bull market. I think the bull market in cryptos is probably going to be ending in about the second quarter of next year. Let's just call it between March and June, maybe August. But I again, I, I think we're in a bull. We're just we're just a bear market in this bull market. Anyways, if you see if you're looking at um, Terra Luna, it's up five percent. It's trading really really strong. Uh, let's look at the chart. This is going to be, I'm going to look at, well, we'll just look at Gemini. As you can see, it's really trading strong. I want to, let's look at the daily. As you can see, pretty much is bouncing off of about, 52, 64. I would say the four for Terra Luna is going to be 50 or 54. We're looking at the lows of about 52 right now, 51. So I thought it was going to hold at 54. Now it's looking like it's going to hold at 52. Right now we're trading at 57. Now the reason I want to look at Luna is because it's trading really strong. It hasn't fallen as much as the other cryptocurrencies. And personally, this is why I, I would say I'm more, this is just a bear market correction inside of a bull market. And that is all I want to say. I will, oh, let's just take a look at an ETH while we're here. Got Coinbase. I'll just look at Coinbase. Um, again, Ethereum's about at, I think, 
right now, I would say we're still in a positive trend for Ethereum. We could be breaking down. <coughs> as a gen as a generalization, I'm I would be way more bullish on Ethereum as opposed to Bitcoin, and maybe Solana. I'm way more bullish on like Terra Luna, just as a generalization. Now these are just a large capitalization cryptocurrencies. In a minute, I'll, I'll get to what I think is really going to explode upward and where you're going to make a lot of money if you are a trader or speculator. Anyways, as you can see, ETH is bouncing around 37.78, keeps pulling back up from there. We're at 37.38 right now. We got down to as low as 35.75. Until we break below that, I would say we're still in a bull market for ETH. Let's look at BTC real quick because I want to sit make a comment on that. Again, this is a Coinbase chart. We went through the trend line that I had written on here. We're now trading at 46.89 or 46.892. My opinion is if we break 4,300, somewhere like see where this bounced recently, like maybe last week, last week I think, it bounced at 42,000. 377 then it came back up I think supports right in here 46 43 to call it 43,046 if we bounce below 43 I will say we're in a bear market especially if we stay below that for a long time by by a long time I mean two or three days to a week if we stay below 43,000 then we're in a bear market I don't think that's gonna happen but we'll have to wait and see what happens now getting back to cryptos I think our whole world is transitioning into a no asset class and that is cryptocurrencies I think our whole world is transitioning to a new economy which is going to be more and more based online more and more wealth is going to be created in the online world or what some people are referring to as the metaverse and this is going to happen no matter what China or the US or the India does to try to regulate it or to try to stop it this is going to happen whether they like it or not and that doesn't mean there's not going to be bear markets. It doesn't mean there's going to be violent moves down and moves up or anything. This is going to be very volatile. And what I see happening is if any first world country tries to regulate it or tax it too much, it's not going to destroy it. It's just going to move into the, well, into a tax havens. Like right now you're starting to see crypto being used more and more in Dubai. Well, you're starting to see crypto projects domiciling themselves in Dubai and Singapore, Iceland, and then in the United States, you're seeing certain states put in laws that are friendly to cryptocurrencies. Those would be like Texas, Wyoming. By no means, those aren't the only states. Florida. There's a lot of venture capital domicile itself inside the United States, inside of Florida, and or Wichita, inside of Florida and uh, Wyoming. So those places, for those who don't, Americans who are outside of the United States, those are states that are very low tax compared to like New York or California. So the capital is domicile itself inside the U.S. where it's regulatory friendly and tax friendly. I would also say a lot of capital is domicile itself into Puerto Rico. For those who are outside the U.S. or even for those who are inside the United States, Puerto Rico is a tax haven for Americans. Like if you have a high income or if you have a lot of capital gains or dividends, after being a resident there for more than two or three years, I can't remember the exact rules, but you have to be a legal resident. Your taxes can go to zero or some some accounts will say 3%, but basically if all you have is dividends and capital gains, it can get to zero. If you have income from a job or income from like a company, technically speaking, they have a tax rate of 3%, but with proper tax planning, it, Puerto Rico is like anywhere else, you can get it to zero, but I don't want to debate that with people. Basically, it's a tax haven for wealthier people who understand how to uh, implement the loopholes and use LLCs and get their income, not so much in income, but get their income in capital gains and dividends where it'll be tax-free or very little. Anyhow, that's where capital is going. It's going to tax-friendly parts of the world. And I just want to point out, that's not just for cryptocurrencies. That's for everything. What we're seeing around the world is more and more countries not more. We're seeing many countries implement more and more taxes, more and more regulations, and we're seeing the world diverge where the countries, some countries are taxing more and regulating more. Other com 
other countries are like taking taxes and regulations down. We're starting to see the world bifurcate to a high tax and low tax, high regulatory areas and low regulatory areas. Or I could just say places that are going to be more freedom and liberty oriented and places that are going to be less freedom and liberty oriented. That's what we're seeing just in the world in general. And we're also seeing that with especially the metaverse or cryptocurrencies. And since more and more wealth will be created online, whether you want to call that the metaverse or whether you want to call that offshore or whether you want to call that online but offshore for tax purposes, more and more people are working outside their countries of birth or they're working in the internet and they're domiciling themselves inside of LLC or an offshore company so they don't have to pay tax. If they do, have, if they're an American and they have to pay tax and they're changing their residency to a low tax or no tax area like Puerto Rico, like for my viewers who don't know this, a lot of the um, YouTube crypto people and a lot of the YouTube influencers in general, even if they're not into cryptocurrency, they actually live in Puerto Rico. Most people don't know that. Quite a few of them, their incomes are so high they just moved to Puerto Rico and they don't, they're just not paying tax. Now, there has been a move of a lot of YouTubers and, and YouTube influencers from like California, New York to like Tejas and uh, Florida. But um, some are just going right, in, right into Puerto Rico just to get outside the tax net. Anyhow, this video ain't about taxes. But as this snowballs and accelerates, you're just going to see more of that. And some viewers will say, well, they, they can do this, this X, Y, and Z to stop it. Yes, but it's just going to, it's not going to stop it. It's going to slow it down. People are just, if you're a U.S. citizen, more and more Americans are going to renounce. So then they won't have to pay anything. They'll get another passport. They'll renounce. And personally, I don't think the U.S. will get down that road too far because the tax cows have already left for the wealthy and, and the elites. And now it's just the middle classes who are redoing the sound themselves by using LLCs in the U.S., moving to another moving to lower tax jurisdictions. But with LLCs and with the ability to move to another tax jurisdiction, they can take their taxes down to zero or very close to zero. In fact, if you're really good, well, if you have a really good accountant, there's many states you can live in with even income taxes, like say Atlanta for, as, for you know, just as one example where you can take your taxes down to zero. There's a lot of states, Arizona, now, Arizona has a stake tax, but again, with an LLC, you can get that down to, to really close to zero. But that's, again, if you use LLC and run your money through it and you're not an employee, just to be clear. But as more and more people become aware of that because more and more data is being consumed online on YouTube and on the Internet, more and more people realize they can do it, so they'll do it. And it's perfectly legal to do it, so they'll be out of the tax net more and more. And then as people see, oh, they can get out of the tax net, save and invest more money because they're paying less taxes, some of them will just move offshore to get completely out of that tax net. Now, again, I'm not here to tell you to renounce or not. I, I personally don't plan on renouncing. I just plan to live in another, you know, lower tax tax jurisdiction. And for those who don't know, there's a tax credit you get. It's like 100, 107,000 or somewhere around there. So if you live outside the U.S., you can earn up to 107,000 from a job or business, and it's tax free. After that, you got to pay income tax. And you're still supposed to pay Social Security, but there's if you use an LLC, you can get around that too. But again, this is not tax advice. All I'm saying is more and more middle class people f figure this out. They're going to take advantage of loopholes. And personally, I think it's too late for the government to shut these loopholes because some states are just going to increase the loopholes. Some are going to decrease them. So you're going to see the tax base move to lower tax jurisdictions. And the higher tax jurisdictions are going to have less and less people paying tax. And they will have to be bailed out by Uncle Sam at some point in the future or bailed out with inflationary policies. Which brings me to kind of a macro thing. Like, as the world collects less and less tax from people, more and more governments are going to inflate their money supplies to collect tax to pay for things. So assets, whether they're crypto assets or whether they're stock market assets or commodities like gold and silver or oil over a long period of time, will be worth more and more, will be worth more and more. So from a long-term perspective, I see these assets going up. Now, short-term in the next you know, six months, I, I personally think the stock market is going to continue being overvalued and keep going up. That's, again, a contrarian view. And part of the reason I'm more bullish on cryptos right now is because there's so many bearish 
sentiment out there. And if we can stay, if BTC, basically I look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. <coughs> if Bitcoin and Ethereum can stay above their trend, then, then I think this will go higher. If they don't, then the spare market will be over. Now, having said all that, if you really want to make a lot of money in crypto, I'm, I would suggest crypto is like, like the gold mining industry. I mean, it's very risky, but people either invest in gold, the commodity like gold coins, or they invest in like large caps stock, gold mining stocks to, to have a less risky position, less volatility. That's one way people do it in that sector. But that, what other investors and speculators do is rather than buying gold and having less volatility, they'll buy the small cap gold miners like gold juniors. Well, it's the same in crypto. So that's my strategy. So we're going to go down. These are the top 100 cryptos. Now, here's here's a good example. Sandbox is a large cap or a, or a mid cap, I would say, of the cryptocurrencies. It's in the metaverse. It's It's in gaming. Uh, that I think is going to go up much, much higher, but it's a lot, it's less risk. So you could do that. I have nothing against it. Decentraland is down here somewhere. I sold all my Decentraland because I, I just, I basically bought it at 20 cents and sold it at over five bucks. I think 515. There's just other things I can deploy it in to uh, grow my capital. And to that end, we'll look at where you could redeploy without a lot of risk. You could redeploy an engine. Again, that's more of a mid cap. It'll go up, but it won't go as much as some of these really small cap risky plays. Um, and again, this is not investment advice. This is just what I'm doing personally. Okay, well, let's get down here. I must have missed Decentral Land, but like Immutable X, Voyager. Maybe the projects will work out. Maybe they won't. I don't know, but. They could go much, much higher in this bull market. And I think in the next six months, they'll go up two, three hundred percent at least. Okay, let's go to uh, KuCoin. Incidentally, KuCoin's in Singapore. Um, for the less, for the more risk adverse, but still they want to, they want to, you know, a, a nice volatile play. There's P PYR, there's CWAR, and those are what I'm looking at and some other coins. There's some really, really small speculative stuff that I don't really want to talk about. But these smaller gaming coins are really going to take off whenever Bitcoin's bottoms out and goes back up. So that's just my view that you can play the crypto, the crypto bull market with these smaller cap and mid cap <clears throat> gaming coins or metaverse coins like Decentraland. That's more of a large cap, Decentraland and uh, Sandbox. Um, I like some of the smaller players like, well, let's just look at that on a chart. Vulcan Forge, Vulcan Forge. That's my favorite play right now for, if you're willing to take some risk, it's not super risky, but as you can see on the daily chart, we're holding at about 1920 a coin. I think it's probably going to eventually bottom out at 1650 probably. If we go below that, then all bets are off. But if, as long as we hold above 1650 and Ethereum and Bitcoin reverse and Solana, you know, and Terra Luna, I see this going back up to 50 bucks, 50 or 60 or 100 a coin. Now, again, these aren't the riskier coins. These are less risky coins. I just want to point that out. But they're far enough down the food chain that you'll get two or three hundred percent that's just how i'm going to play it i'm more in the mid caps as opposed to small caps but there are some small caps that you can do like let's see wild sea war yeah let's look on KuCoin. see this is a very new project i just want to point that out uh these are very very risky and i'm not recommending you do this unless you want a huge amount of volatility as you can see from the daily chart, this hasn't been a this hasn't been a project for that long, maybe a month. But as you can see, it bottomed out at around well, recently a dollar eight. Whenever it started, it sold out for like looks like two cents. Then it in the one day it went from two cents to twenty two bucks, and then from there it traded right around let's say one twenty five to. 
four dollars recently i i bought a big well i bought a speculative position in the dollar 30 range the what the dollar to dollar 30 range right right in here then it shot up 70 80 percent and now we're selling off today i suspect we're going to be at four dollars in the next few weeks again i'm assuming we're in a bull market still this is just a bear market if in the next week or two Bitcoin and Ethereum take off again, this will probably be at four bucks, six bucks really shortly. I will sell half the position and take a ride on the rest. And by the way, I'll take that capital off and redeploy into either Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, or Luna, Terra Luna to ride out the rest of the bull in those coins. Um, as you can tell, I'm mostly in the in the gaming coins because of the alpha, because that's where the volatility is going to be. If you're into DeFi, I'm not against EFY or anything. I think that's going to be the future for banking, but I'm just not interested in it, so I don't comment on it. I don't comment on it as comment on it as much. Let's see. Let's look at Wild real quick. Again, these are further down the food chain, so there's more risk with these. Again, this has been around I don't know three or four, three months, maybe maybe not even that. Let's see September. Yeah, so it looks like. September 21st, no, August 21st, to like where we are today, December 13th, no, December 14th. But anyways, as you can see from Wild, again, these are game coins. If you're a gamer, you'll know what I'm talking about. But anyways, it appears there's support around 326. We keep bouncing off that, then we bounce back up, then with this latest scare in the market, we're now down to 343. I think it could go down to... Ultimately, I think this is, could sell off to 271 in the next few days. Um, I've been I've been averaging in right actually right about right around here, but with the understanding that I think there could be some, a little bit more bearishness or bearish sentiment in the market, and I'm prepared to buy down in here. Again, I'll wait to see what Bitcoin does before I actually buy. I'm just saying that's where I think it's going to go. If Bitcoin starts rallying in the next few days, I'll just add more to the position right now. I suspect there's going to be a lot of bear sentiment. Let me just, let's just get off the charts for a minute. Show you what I mean. We're on Yahoo News. This is why everyone's so bearish because a lot of these stories, I'm not saying they're planted, but they're put in the media. The media plants these stories to get people fearful, to get people to, to shake them out of their Bitcoin positions. And that's what I think is actually happening. A lot of... The establishment types are putting these stories into the media, which gets you to shake it out. Then after the new year, after Christmas and the new year, when the when the uh, the hedge funds and a lot of the bigger players, they're going to start adding to their positions or just adding new positions. The big institutions that want to get in, they're probably going to get in at 40, I would say 43 to 45. I'm assuming we're not going to break below 43. If we do, then it's, you know, we're in another ball game. But anyways... I just want to show you a few of the headlines, which may not be here. But in some of the news outlets, there's a lot of these bear stories. Like for here, we got Michael Saylor. They're talking about him buying. But there's a lot of these stories talking about how risky it is and how this is going to be the start of a big bear market. Which, to be fair, is possible, but I don't really see him here. But I saw him on my my phone. I usually use my phone to look up things. But there's a lot of bear sentiment in some of these news stories, and also too, from a macro point of view, just as an example, Pakistan is raising its rate 100 basis points to nine and three quarters. Two or three days ago, Brazil just raised its interest rates 175 basis points to fight inflation. Um, this is pretty bearish from a macro point of view. It's getting everyone scared that markets are going to sell off. Again, we'll have to wait and see. In the U.S., I think this is just a correction. Now, in the emerging markets, I don't have a comment on that. But if you look at Turkey, Turkey is not raising its rates and its stock markets is through the roof. I don't have a, a chart of the Turkish stock market, but if you look at the dollar, the the Turkish the, the dollar Turkish uh, currency rate. You would have made more money just buying the Turkish stock market than buying dollars against the Turkish lira. Now, for wealthy people, that's one option they can do. If there's foreign exchange controls, they can't buy gold in Turkey, or they can't buy the dollar. 
Um, a lot of average people don't have access to dollars. My understanding is Turkey is trying to make it harder for people to get dollars. I'm not sure what the actual law is, but months ago I had read that Turkey was trying to either was or had made it illegal to buy gold, but I'm not sure how you would even enforce that. But anyways, there's a lot of bear sentiment as far as emerging markets go and in markets in general. And then there's, you know, speculation that the Fed's going to start tapering and the Fed's going to accelerate withdrawal of economic A's as prices surge. That's what we hear. We'll have to wait and see. I think if they actually raise rates, that's going to really stop, cause the stock market to crash. And then we'll probably be in a bear market for a while. And then they're going to have to bring rates down if they actually raise them, which I don't think is going to happen. And um, that's just going to cause more price, more monetary inflation. And these things are just going to go up again. Anyways, here's another story to look at. Afghan Central Bank moves to halt currency slide as crisis deepens. Afghanistan, Turkey, Lebanon, they're not in the news as much, but their currencies are just crashing. Um, Burma, like I said in my video previously, Burma or Myanmar is the opposition now wants to use Tether. Like they want to use like a stable coin currency as opposed to their own currency. I think you're just going to see more and more of that, but that's more of a long-term thing. It's related to where, where we're going in the long run. Like in the long run, I think I, I see a lot. of Michael Saylor said this in a review, and I agree with him. We're going to see maybe a third of the world using U.S. dollar stable coins because their currencies are so crappy and their inflations are so high. I don't see that ending anytime soon. That's why long term I'd be, I'd be bullish on almost any asset from shares in the U.S., tech shares in the U.S., to gold, to silver, to oil, to you know, Bitcoin and ETH to Solana. Um, but between now and, and then, you know, there's going to be sell-offs. I just think we're having to be in one right now. Anyways, I don't see any or the, I was going to show you something, but I can't see it right now. Anyways, I just want to get back to uh, talking about uh, Wild. This is one of many, many game coins you can buy. Like pick what you want, specialize in whatever you want to trade. These are just ones I'm looking at and accumulating. And then, <clears throat> you know, when they start rallying again and go, I'll, I'll get rid of it. I'll get rid of part of the positions when they go up at the old, old highs. And some of these I'll hold long term for two or three hundred percent, maybe more. Maybe we'll get a 10 to 1 or 21. I mean, long term, you will. I just have really speculative ones where I just trade. And then they have ones like more longer term, like engine that I just buy and hold. I don't, I don't really trade them at all. Engine would be a good example of that. Let's look at engine. This is just one. As we can see, it's sitting on support, which is around 220. It's at, what, 230? As long as it stays, like, above 216, I don't think it's going to plunge. But again, this is assuming BTC and ETH, you know, don't go through their uh, trend trend levels, which for BTC is about 43,800 or something. But if they do, then this bear market could get really ugly fast. But this is where I, I see I see it rallying off of here. Then we'll go back up to the old highs, and then probably we could see engine at twenty or thirty thirty bucks a token. Anyways, that's it for now. Um, I'm gonna just post this, like, share, leave a comment. Tell me tell me what you think about this. Oops, damn. The frack.